Hey everyone. Um, been trying to put some videos together in the last couple of days. Uh, seems I always have video editing software programs. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter anyway, I can't edit so. Um, I just need something that I can dump the footage straight on, uh, straight off the camera onto the uh, computer and then you know put it all into one sort of clip and be able to upload it. Is it upload or download? Onto YouTube, you know what I mean, anyway. Um, I'm going to hopefully, uh, this little clip here will be for the start of um, number 21. Um, I should have put those in the video the other day, but I think I broke your balls enough with one 20 minute clip and the other ones, by the time it gets done, it's 51 minutes of me rambling on about nothing. Um, that's number 19. Don't ask me what happened. Um, yeah, 19. It's going to come after 20, so, yeah. But anyway, um, one of the things I should have mentioned was, before I took the dashboard out, the dash panel, um, I had a feeling that my steering column would need to go up a little bit. Um, it just felt, the steering wheel felt a little close to my legs once the bucket seats were in. So what I did is, if you remember back to some of the, um, the earlier clips, I ended up making this mounting bracket here, the dropper, for the um, steering column. Well, what I did yes, uh, not yesterday, the day before, is I um, ended up reducing it by another 10 millimeters. So yeah, I had to sort of fold it all out, uh, hammer it down, mark a new line on it, put it back in the vise, and um, and rebend it. But it came up really good. So that's. That's now moved me two millimetres closer to the dash panel, which will completely um, eliminate any gap whatsoever. And all I will have is downwards movement, uh, as this this will be set on its highest um, highest setting. So. Yeah, so I did that. Um, now, might be able to see these splits a little bit better. The light's a little kinder to us today. This is the one that I didn't finish. You'll see this in um, video 19. I've welded this one on the inside, but I haven't done anything on the outside. I got good penetration though, right through the metal, um, which is awesome. Um, this was the other side. This is where the um, supporting bars to the radiator cowl uh, run from. And um, yeah, the split on both sides. It seems that the, the cabin splits in the same places on both sides. Um, it just seems to be structural weakness in the design here, you know, obviously the two holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some backing plates um, in here to stop stop it pulling on the actual um, firewall and hopefully avoid splits in the future. Uh, as you know, we had a split there and we had a split on this side as well. So they've split in the same spots uh, down along the front here. Um, they split as well. So yeah, it's it's very much uniformed in the way the cabin sort of has started coming apart over its 81 years or so on of life so um, yeah I know where all the weak spots are now so I can um, I can reinforce them uh, one of the other things that I uh, did on this um, dash panel was I had a hole in the top here somebody had punched a hole through there with a screwdriver or something in its day 
and um, I filled that in too. I forgot to point that out when I showed you this and that and whatever else I showed you. Um, so uh, I'll leave this here for now. Uh, otherwise, maybe ten, mil ten minutes of rambling on about nothing again. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll try and get some more work done on the truck in the next day or two. Cheers. Uh, one other thing I needed to do the other day too was um, the bar that will run inside here to mount the uh, windscreen wiper spindles. I needed to put a, a slight curve in it because the front of the cabin does curve. So what I did is I took this out into my into my driveway and I put this up on a block of wood like that and I just backed my SUV up over the top of it and it put a nice curve in it and it just happens that yeah just rolling up and down on that gave me exactly what I needed I don't know if you're going to be able to see this properly because of the fisheye lens but that's that's got a nice curve in it and that um yeah it was so simple uh, a mate of mine actually suggested doing that before he was going to uh, build that that roller, that square tube roller I was talking about. Uh, I still I still haven't got around to doing that yet. Everything's still s sort of sitting on the bench over there. So um, as a quick fix, uh, something that he suggested, I tried and it, it worked. So yeah, you don't always need the uh, tools to get the job done. Okay guys, um, I think I might have some luck with the air conditioning unit going in. Uh, just trying to do a, sort of a little quick mock-up. I am restricted for room because of the outlet pipes on the units. So it's going to be one of those things where I have to make an estimated guess that it will fit or it won't fit. Because once I drill the holes in the firewall, I've drilled them. So um, I'll show you what I've got. I think it's going to go. I think it's going to go in. Still got to go up a few inches. But as I said, it's the um, the outlet pipes with the aircon and the heater that's stopping me from pushing it all the way up um, and and all the way back to the uh, firewall itself. But I'll show you what I got. Okay. So. These are, our, these are our first two components, um, fan motor and um, heater core, I think. No, that could be the air, air con. Air con. Oh, it could be both, actually. Um, so, I know it's very, very hard to see, but right here, where my hand is, if you can see that, that's the outlet for the, um, for the AC. So, there... We're about four, maybe past the actual back of the box. They're probably about, I don't know, two and a half to three inches long. So this whole unit can go back two and a half to three inches long. I've left this out a little bit from here because obviously as it gets pushed back, it's going to need um, to come over a bit with the cowl being tapered. So, you know, just sitting on that jack stand there, it's pretty much put this unit right in the middle. Now, in the Festiva, these vents came out through two square vents in the dashboard right behind this mount for the console. So, as it's looking at the moment, it's not looking too bad. Um, the only thing I might have a, a drama with is the cables um, being long enough because I, I think this will sit just a little bit off centre, probably a little bit to the right. But as I said, I'm not really sure yet. I'm trying to find a better way to hold all the components together because these each module doesn't slide into each other. They slide into this band and this band doesn't really hold them tightly. It's as loose as it's as loose as you could you could get it. Um, 
they had foam rubber in there and they I think they relied on the foam rubber when it was new just to hold everything in but everything got screwed to the firewall as well so um, yeah there wasn't uh, you know it was it was well set up but um, I'm guessing I'm guessing it's it's gonna fit um, but yeah I've just got to um, take my time not cock it up not cut holes in the firewall that I don't need um, but I think I think it might go I think it might just go in my dash panel if you can see the old rust mark there the old line dash panel comes down to about here so where this is sitting it'd be it'd be level with the the bottom of these these openings here so um, there's a couple of inches here and these mounting brackets here can always be taken off if need be I can always do something in through the side of the box here um, I can always make some mounts and bring them off the side of the plastic box it's only um, a two piece setup that just clips together and you've got Good access through the vent flaps anyway so um, yeah I'm hoping I'm hoping <laughs> uh, the other thing that looks like it's going to become an issue is the cowl vent handle so if I'm going to retain that now I might have to look at some sort of like little actuator um, little motor drive I have seen a motor little motor drive uh, installed on a cowl vent before so that that's nice and compact it might be something that I can install in this and do away with the whole handle mechanism and then yeah that's out of the way then but um, yeah I'm just gonna have a bit, little bit of a play with it over the next day or two and see what I can uh, see what I can come up with and hopefully, hopefully I'll end up with uh, with an aircon heater unit, which has cost me nothing. So, yeah. Cheers. Okay, guys, what I did is rather than struggle with those those first two pieces to try and get them in, I, I separated them, which I should have done in the first place, and worked on the first bit and then the next bit and the bit after that um, I made a couple little taken a couple little um, bits off it these were just um, the tops of some plastic mounts um, which I'm not I'm not going to need those they're not going to be needed um, so I've mounted this first bit in and if I take this dashboard out you can see that there that that's got to go higher but I just used one of the existing holes in the firewall and um, there are the tabs I cut off I cut this one off and I've still got enough if I wanted to run some sort of support here I've still got enough meat there to drill a hole and that original hole still in there so it can go up quite a bit um, we've got let's have a look and see what we've got here still we can go up according to this one say about 45 mil 45 so in it's about one what's that one and three quarter inches or something so does this, this first bit doesn't look too bad you know, I can get it over a little bit more. I can get a few inches um, this way also, and the top of the top of this opening here is not really going to be a vent that I need. Um, it mostly be this vent that that works like that. So um, yeah, I can I can plate that off on the top, block that in. So anyway.
just as a bit of a just to see what's going on here. <laughs> I'm going to try and do my best here with one hand. Let me put the camera down for a second. Alright guys, put that in. Okay, so a dash panel sitting back in there. There's the, uh, the heater motor, or blower, but remember that's got to go up one and three quarter inches or 45 mil still so um, if I was sitting in the bucket seat from from where I, I estimate I'm going to be sitting I can't see that unit at all you can't see it it's only when you get sort of you stick your head down under the dash that you can see it so I think it's going to work out good I think it's going to be good um, and I have determined that this is a completely flat fit across uh, all three units so the laugh in there um, it's just what protrudes this side up against the bar here and how far this is going to sit over that, that that's going to be the issue if there is any issue these two vents here I'll use those I've got I've got all the original ducting out of the Festiva so I've got the part that actually slots straight onto there. I'll use this for my um, windscreen demisters. So I'm going to cut a couple of slots into there. And the ducting will run straight up to those slots. And uh, and that'll be the, the dash or the windscreen taken care of. Um, and yeah. So I guess they're the outlets for the floor. So... That's all right. As long as I've got floor, as long as I've got the floor, well, not even the floor. Uh, as long as I've got the windscreen and I've got two dash vents for the aircon, I'm happy. Um, so yeah, I'll keep plugging away and see how far I get, and uh, I'll let you know how we go. Cheers. Hi everyone. Um, another day. <laughs> I've come out to have a little bit of a go at this air conditioning unit again. Um, part one winning really good. So I made a few reference points on that one using some masking tape and stuff like that. Slotted the next one in, traced around the uh, pipes that have got to go through the firewall, drilled them hoping that they were going to be spot on. I don't think I've done all right, so I'll give you a bit of a look at it. Okay, that's the second unit. It's got to go in. So this is this is what contains all the air conditioning. It's got all the aircon stuff in there. I don't know if you can see it. A little dark, and I hope there's not a lot of glare off the off the thing. But you can see all the all the aircon stuff in there. So this is the actual aircon unit. Okay, the first bit's the fan that drives all the air through the vents. Now that's sitting pretty good. I've had to space it out here. Um, this part actually sits over the the tab on the white bit, but I don't think that's going to be thick enough, simply because of the way the firewall shaped. So probably have to put a few washers behind it just to to space it out. I have a little like a little crush tube behind there at the moment. Everything's just sitting loose, um, but it's a nice fit. The cowl van, I think we're going to have some interference there. There may be a way I can get around it um, by actually bending bending the handle this way in front of this unit because this is smaller and coming out this side of the console. So I'm not sure yet. I'm not particularly bothered about that. That's something that can always be fiddled with later. I can put a little electric gear drive motor on it or something if I really, really want it. If not, I'll just lock it down and... If you got aircon, why do you really need it? Um, you know, I wanted it for authentic authenticity purposes, but if it's not possible with the setup I'm using in here, it's not possible. So all I've done from the outside is I passed that bolt bolt through the hole that I, I drilled for that first unit, so that, that white one, the fan, and so that they share the same 
bolt holes, so that's got to be right because the tabs overlap each other and the bolt goes through the two of them. Now my pipes, um, I've drilled this. Um, the, the pipe's actually smaller than the nut, so obviously I had to allow for the width of the nut, so I used a one inch, that'd be 25 mil. I've used the one inch hole saw because I simply don't have 25. Um, but it's okay to have a little bit of uh, movement sideways. And this poor old girl, I didn't have, this measured up at about, I think, 19 mil. But obviously the nut was slightly bigger, so I had to go uh, 20. I didn't have a 20 mil drill, and I didn't have a hole saw, metal hole saw, um, around that size. The smallest I've got is the, the 25, or 1 inch. So I drilled it out in steps. I used, I think, a 6 mil to get it started, went up to a 9 mil, then used a 12 mil. And I had to be careful, because it's right on this ridge too, so... I had, to, I had to make sure I got it in line. Um, and then what I used, once I got up to my 12 mil, I don't have anything bigger, so I used this thing that I bought a long time ago. And on the last um, job I was doing, it's like the hardening in this just sort of seemed to vanish. And it started to wear it out. Like, this is hardened steel. Um... And it, it just wore it away. It wore it away. So I got my little um, die grinder bit. Well, I think some of you guys refer to them as Dremel bits. Um, it's only a Dremel if you've actually got the Dremel um, tool. <laughs> but they're a, die, they're a die grinder bit. So um, what I did is I just went around that 12 mil hole with that, got it out as far as I possibly could until... I reached some good material on this uh, taper drill, or whatever you want to call it. And once I got to this good bit, it made it easy. It just it just ripped it all out. So you know, I've got a nice gap there at the moment. You know, the pipe is flexible, so um, you know, there's plenty of room there. It's not going to rub. Same with the top. There's, there's a little bit of gap there. It's leaning a little bit more down on the bottom at the moment because I've only just got it sitting there and this bolt's not done up properly. It's just hanging off the thread sort of thing, but it's where I need it. So, first two components seem to go in really good. I did, I did trial fit, or try and trial fit the main section, this black box. Um, the cowl vent is going to be the issue, so I'm going to just take out the two split pins in here remove the cowl vent, get this fitted up, put the cowl vent back in, see what we need or what we don't need, and um, yeah, work it out from there. But I'm 100% sure now that this aircon unit is going to fit. Um, wasn't too bad working out the holes for those pipes, but I think it's going to be a lot harder to work out the holes for these pipes. Um, they're going to come out down here somewhere. It'd be really nice if one of these holes actually lined up, and it'd be that'd be fantastic. But um, yeah, this one just without me even having attempted it, it's just doing my head in how I'm actually going to do this one. So um, I think once the cowl vents out, it'll be a lot easier. I can put it up on a um, on a jack stand and get it sitting right. You can see there, there's a little bit of twist in it at the moment. So that probably means that that needs a little bit more of a spacer there, just to sort of bring that out, which will push that in. And that'll be fine. It's sitting level, and there's not that much in it. You know, they have, um, they have these adjustable bands that don't really hold the units together. They work more, of, more as a seal. They've just got some, um, just some foam in there. I can't show you on this one, but this would be for this side. Um, and they just they just sit on there like that. Um, this should go. Should go on. I know it falls on the other side. Each part, each components had a little bit of a different wear rate on there. Um, so I might need to back the screw off a little bit. But yeah, there's nothing. 
it's a really shit seal. <laughs> so, and um, it's got the same sort of band on this side as well. And then that's, that's all that holds the, the components together. If I was really worried about it, I could assemble the whole thing on the floor once I fitted everything up. And I could actually drill through these bands and put like a self-tapper in into this plastic because there's so much meat there there's that's got to be um hang on well i guess when we got a, a, a ruler <laughs> that's 45 millimeters guys so about one and three quarter inches got plenty of room to put two self-tappers in side by side and then in here in this one i've got what's that 15 millimeters so what's that half inch so uh, five eight or something so yeah i can get you know a couple of self tappers in up here and down two down the back and two underneath and basically hold the the unit together and um yeah so oh good i won't ramble on for much longer um because it's nine minutes already shit um yeah, I've got to put this other unit in, so I'll uh, start filming again when I, um, I've got this in place. Cheers. Hey guys, whilst I remember, um, perfect opportunity to show you what I'd done prior to me doing these videos. Um, when I shot the very first one, part one, I already had the, um, the console support in and the bar the strengthening bar that came out of the Festive already installed. Um, so I'll show you what I did with it. Okay, this is it here. Now, as you can see, let's try and get this to stand up. It's pretty much, well, it is exactly the way it came out of Festiva. I did have to chop the ends off here a little bit. They're a little bit too long. Uh, and they did have plates on them, which weren't going to work for my application. These brackets, I've got one on each side. These are original Studebaker floor brackets. So I ended up using these. These worked perfect for the application because it gave me um, a point in which I could put a bolt or bolts through into the solid dashboard mount. And then I had these parts on the side, which, although don't sit right up against the body, I am going to put I'm going to put some rubber on the back of them, so it's like a, a buffer, um, just to keep that'll that'll stop the sides of the cow from flexing. Um, it'll be that that nice high density foam that I bought for the um, for the roof of the chev. So I just put a little bit of that on the side. Wait for Mr. Harley Davidson to go by. All right, and um, the other thing that I had to do was the steering mount. It used to sit over here somewhere. So that, that mount was here. I ground that off, and I moved it over and re-welded it here. That kept, that kept the mounting point in the same position that the Studebaker steering column used to be mounted to. So this matches up with those those holes on the under lip of that dash where I welded that crack up the other day. So that keeps that centered so I know that that is where the Studebaker column used to sit. And that's about it guys. That's all I can tell you about this but I thought I'd show you it anyway because it, it's always been in the truck and never been out of the truck for me to show you what I did there. It works well it's solid when it goes in um, the other thing I should have showed you too was uh, the floor as you can see you know nice welds <laughs> um, all this has been welded up nothing's been ground back um, I'm only going to grind it back on the top obviously to get the um, to get the aluminium or aluminum depends what part of the world you're from uh, floor pan to sit in properly but all the welds are good as I said they would be um, I think I only ended up with 
one dodgy weld, which was this one. It's almost like two tacks, but you know, um, I'm pretty happy. You know, as I was saying, I'm getting to learn all about my welder now. And you know, they're good flowing welds. Didn't blow no holes in anything. Got all the um, the wires. I think I've got all the wire speed correct and and the heat amps, all that sort of stuff. Um, if you guys notice anything that you think looks a little bit weird, um, you know, drop me a comment, uh, you know, because I'd love to learn a bit more about the welder. Um, I got the manual for it, but you don't always, you know, doesn't always make sense if you don't, if you don't know, if you're not in that field, you know. Ask me anything about bricklaying, I can tell you, because I'm a bricklayer by trade. I'm not a, I'm not a welder, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the floor. Um, very happy with it. Also got something in the post today from China or Hong Kong. I swear it's the fastest delivery from either country, and I buy a lot of stuff out of Hong Kong and China. Fastest delivery ever. I placed an order for these things, I swear, not even five days ago. I don't know how they got here this fast, but I'm, I'm not going to argue. I got my boot poppers, and they feel really good. They feel like they've got heaps of uh, tension on them. They are adjustable on the end, so you can back them off a little bit. So I got the two of them. $17. Most of the hot rod places here in Australia, for a set of boot poppers, I think they're wanting about... Don't quote me on this, but I think the last time I checked, they wanted about 60 bucks or something for a pair. I wasn't prepared to pay that. So, um, and what I have noticed is that, and I've compared them this morning on the internet. I'm looking at a set of, um, I was looking at a set of um, bear claw locks for the doors, but they also do like packages where you buy the bear claw locks and you get door poppers and if you want you can get like an actuator kit that will comes with all the brackets for the bear claw locks so i was having a look at them and i swear those window po uh, sorry not window poppers those those door poppers are identical even the finish on the on the, the the metal like the chrome plating is exactly the same the rubber stop is exactly the same the screw that comes out of the end is exactly the same so i think you know, possibly they're, they're buying them out of Hong Kong, China, putting the packages together, and so I don't think I've uh, done too bad with that. I think you know they're gonna they're gonna do it, do what I need them to do, and I only need the boot lift lid just to lift past the um, past the latch. <laughs> so yeah, no, a good score for seventeen dollars delivered. Very happy. Uh, I've got some other stuff coming too uh, this week. My rear, hopefully my rear fenders. Um, should be here from far north Queensland. Uh, I know he was going to get them sent off this week. Whether they do arrive this week or not is another thing. The postal service here in Australia is shit house, absolutely shit house. Um, but you know, it, when it gets here, it gets here. I'm not in any hurry for them. They're just going to get stored when they get here anyway. Uh, what else have I got coming? Um, oh, I don't know, I've got a few other little bits and pieces coming, I'll probably remember once I shut the video down, so it doesn't matter, you'll see them anyway. Alright, I'm going to keep working on this thing, because I still haven't done that black part yet. The heater, that's the heater. <laughs> um, I'm going to get stuck into that and um, start filming again once I've got it, got it in. Cheers guys, thanks. Okay, I've had a bit of a play with that third uh, part of the air conditioning, and it goes in. A few little dramas, but I think I think I can get on top of it. So I'll give you a look in here. So it goes in behind the dash. Problem is, it's just clipping the back of the bar here, and the body, the plastic body of this is hitting hard up against here. Now, the reason for that is this hump. 
the unit can't sit flat against here there's a 60 millimeter recess there so instantly if I was to flatten this firewall out I'd gain 60 mil um, I don't technically need to do the whole lot I only need to come up to about here because that's where the bottom of the um, heater box finishes so I could cut it across here and that would give me take that bottom section out and that will give me the 60 mil that I need now through the top here I'm hoping that you can see this get some light happening here okay if I shine that down in there I hope this it's not too bright you can see the two pipes uh, for the heater and there's like a little bulkhead that they come out of now that bulk bulkhead is actually sitting on that that recessed hump now as you can see there's a there's a really big really big gap here I'm going to get my hand right down there so if I was to move that heater heater box 60 mil towards the dashboard uh, sorry towards the firewall I don't think I'd have a problem at all um, as you know I've got a spacer in this second one here so that can definitely be moved uh, towards the firewall um, one of the one of the um, besides it hitting this uh, cross brace one of the things that sort of um, lead me to, to check things out sorry guys I'm trying to get this light set up so it's a little bit better was the console now heater controls aircon controls going that top one this was for the CD player um, and then we had a little storage bucket there that went into this third one well it turns out that the second and third ones are identical so I can always move the CD player down here to gain um, I gain more clearance and put the the bucket in there which is a lot shallower than a CD player so I've got that sorted but um, and what I can do also is this, this top support here I can chop that off here right so if any of this gets in the way that that can all go but as it sits at the moment I'm going to try and line up the center of my dash is roughly between these two holes and obviously that's the center of the console so if I line that up there and I'm trying to I'm, I'm gonna try and do all do all this with um, <laughs> with basically one hand I'm going to use my knees here so if I sit that there where it would need to sit and I grab this and I measure to the face I'm looking at 101 millimeters I know we need 60 but as you can see there I can take that top piece off and the CD player, I'm hoping it's not too dark for you to see that, the CD player um, slot actually sits below the heater. It sits below the heater unit. So, I still may be able to, to um, get away with it. Now, you know, it's a, it's a, there's lots of different scenarios here. If I really want to keep this aircon unit, which I know will, will go in, it will go in and it will fit. It's a matter of what else do I have to modify in order to make it, um, to make everything fit. You know, do I have to take a little bit out of the side of the console here? If so, no biggie. I can live with that. Um, if I have to chop this top piece out, can I live with that? Yeah, sure, I can live with that. There's no issue there. Um, but once I start chopping into the firewall, into the sheet metal, I'm committed. I'm basically committed, and if I push that back a 60mm and it's still not enough, I'm sort of screwed. 
the other issue I was worried about was this control unit. So that will go into the console, but you know, I've got to have when that goes back 60 mil, I'll definitely have enough clearance when that's sitting in the console to, to go back its required amount. Um, it'll be sort of over here somewhere, but the cable's sort of flexing at the moment. Sorry, guys, I'm gonna try and push that cable. So, at the moment, that's where it's sitting at the center point of the console. So, there's not a lot of gap there, which is good. Which is good. It means that it that there's almost the clearance I need already but I can gain 60 mil, so I know that's gonna go in, and I'm pretty sure that if I put that CD player in that third hole, the CD player will go in, and a lot, I'm not really fussed, okay? If, if I can't get a CD player in here, all I'll do is I'll go and find another one of them, and I'll just have two storage compartments in there, which means I can shorten up this entire thing, I can cut this entire thing off at about here, and that whole unit will just, just slide in inside the console um no, no issue but yeah scared to death of cutting the firewall um and that recess really isn't needed um it's like on the chef i i don't i don't need that um all the recess gives me is a little bit more um space to uh you know do whatever I need to do on the distributor. Uh, on this, the Dizzy's at the front because it's a Cleveland, so I don't need a recess at the back. It's a complete waste of space, to be honest, but it still scares me to have to cut this. Like, I'm so committed now, you might say, oh, fuck, you've cut the windscreen out and you've, you, you, you know, you, you've done bits and pieces to it already. It's, but still, um, yeah, you know, it's probably the best part of the truck. <laughs> It's solid. Um, so what I might do is I won't I won't cut the whole lot out. I won't cut all along this seam here, which seems to be the the right thing to do. But I might I might just take a, a little stab at it and maybe just just cut off what I think I need. Might cut off what I think I need. Um, Sort of here or there. I, I, I'm really not sure. I'm really not sure. Um, so I'm gonna have a bit of a think about it. I'm, I'm not gonna do no more on the aircon. Um, because I don't. I don't want to stuff it up. I don't want to stuff up not only the aircon but stuff up the firewall and stuff up not being able to put the console in and. Steering column, no problem. I uh, got clearance there, which is great. Um, but yeah, I managed to my measurements worked out really, really good. Like all the pipes come through, and the two units actually meet at the right point. So um, I got all that right. That's all good. It's just a matter of bringing this these pipes through an extra sixty mil. The engine doesn't sit that high either. As you can see, I had concerns here with the rocker cover. So the rocker cover only sort of came to this seam here, or this seam here, and those pipes were a mile away. So they'll sort of sit above the intake manifold, uh, which is actually perfect. It's where you want them. Um, so, yeah. Um, if anybody's got any suggestions, uh, please shoot me through a message, leave a comment, um, I'd love your feedback, in 20 videos nobody's ever left feedback, so, um, or, or any tips, or any, you know, shared any experiences that they might have had when they were trying to uh, do something like this, like any, any advice is better than no advice, so, um, yeah, please, feel free to leave comments, um, don't leave bad ones though. <laughs> don't leave bad ones because um, all I'll do is delete them so um, yeah. help me 
help myself to get this finished guys so that at least um you know all, all those painstaking uh hours you've spent watching my videos haven't been a complete waste uh, yeah all right i'll keep going i'll keep thinking i'm gonna have a beer it always helps me think and um yeah i'll pick up on the video later when i when i sort something out cheers okay guys i'll give you a quick look at what i'm doing um just cut this as you can see this is for the clearance yeah, cut the whole lot out there we go now that heater control should fit it's just a shame that it, it caught the bottom of this but it won't matter um, if I weld in a flat piece in here that'll give me the clearance and then I'll just weld a flat piece in across the bottom here um, I haven't looked at this to be honest, it might be, nah, I thought there might have been something I could do there, like a reverse type thing, but nah, obviously not, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, I've done a neat cut there, and well, as soon as I could get it, <laughs> um, so if worse comes to worse, I can always put that back in, so there we go, uh, now to put the heater unit back in and see if we can gain that 60mm. Okay guys. I um I took the gamble and I did cut that um that firewall out as you'll have seen in the, the previous clip. Um I've put that support bar back in under the under the dash. Uh now that I can actually get the heater box up against the firewall and um I've got clearance got a little bit of a uh, I've got a little a little wedge a little wooden wedge in there at the moment just holding it up because there's there's nothing actually bolted to the firewall at the moment but looking at the pipes from the outside they seem to be level so I'm guessing the units level um, I've set the dash back in but I have not put a bolt into it yet but it's looking like it's sitting pretty sweet and I started playing with the console because I needed to make sure the console was going to fit as I said in the last clip so um, yes I did have to trim the console up a little bit uh, I've got it temporarily taped here at the moment and it is held in by two little fixing plugs on the side but I have to modify some brackets uh, some original brackets that held it in place uh, which is no biggie it's I'll do it in five minutes but um guys that's what I got that's what I got so consoles in air conditioners in there's enough room for the steering column down there um, as you can see I had to scallop or cut out the col uh, console around here I probably could have done it a little neater um, gone a little bit higher but I had a lot of stuffing around here with with these these pieces here as you can see I've got all the scrap bits out there they were just basically like supports uh, for the radio just sort of stiffened up these these outlets I've put that little um, storage compartment back in but if you remember that used to be in here so I've got it looks like I've got enough clearance there for my CD player to go in all I've done is just swap the, the two holes around which is going to work great um, you know that see that that will get pushed back up there's a couple of little things I just still got to t tweak a little bit um, I think this this insert is just hitting up against this heater box but as I said the heater box isn't bolted in so that I could probably gain like even if I gain one mil or two mil that'll that'll be perfect you know like there you go I just lifted that heater box up so um, and I've got it, you know, by the time I pull the dash out to where it's got to be, that console's going to fit nice. It's just a little bit of, little bit of tweaking it here, a little bit of tweaking it there. But um, it looks like uh, I reached my objective. I've got the, well, I shouldn't say I got it in yet, but the air con looks as if it's all going to fit. Console's going to fit. Um... CD player should go into there shouldn't be any issues with one going in there 
I should be able to get my heater controls in there. I haven't tested it yet, but you know, f fingers crossed. Um, God help me if it doesn't, because I can't modify that at all. Um, so I don't know what I'd do. What I what I'd probably do is I'd build a little spacer block here because there is a recess. I'd build a spacer block and I'd bring the controls out a little bit more. I'd bring them forward. I think I'd be able to do that and it'd still look really neat because they do sit, actually they, they mount in from behind. They mount in from behind. But as you can see, the fascia of this sits flush with the console and the CD player will sit flush with the console. So there's no reason I couldn't make that control panel sit flush with it here and obviously as it goes up because this comes out on an angle it will be behind that front edge so it will still look it will still look okay so i've got a, i've got a couple of little things that i uh up my sleeve there to try and make it all fit but um yeah not too bad i, I am kicking myself a little bit i did t did take a little bit too much out of there but i don't think anybody's going to notice that and a little bit of clearance won't give me any rattles. I've got to clean it up. It's still got a bit of melted plastic on the edges. So I'll put a nice little chamfer on the edge there and I'll um, I'll get it all, all straight and looking good like it's like it is meant to be. The side I didn't have to touch it at all. Um so yeah, all good. That can stay the way it the way it was uh, designed to stay. And um yeah, I'll keep going, and I'll, I'll see what else I can do. Cheers. Okay, I've got all the components of the aircon sitting up under the dash. Nothing's bolted in, but it's all sitting there, and it all fits, which is a good sign, because if it sits there freely, most likely it's going to sit there when it's all bolted together. So, I've got a couple of jack stands and stuff holding everything together, so it'll give me a bit of a look. I hope the glare from these... Uh, fluorescent tubes don't interfere too much but there we go so we've got the main heater heater con uh, heater box here we've got the aircon and we've got the blower fan over here in the corner um, as you can see it doesn't quite line up but that's because it's sitting on a jack stand on an angle and but it will it will um, there's, there's plenty of clearance up the side there, so it should all go in nice. There's a nice little gap between these two, so I definitely know that they'll go together. And the only thing that I might be stuck with is this heater control. I can't get it back. It's supposed to load in from behind the console. What I might have to do is actually take these fastening tabs off on each side and load it in from the front because I've... The cables are hitting on the box here, but I have got an another option. I keep coming up with all these options um, the more I look at it. What I can do, I hope you can see this with the light. Right here where these tubes are, there's um, a rubber, just like a rubber, a piece of rubber to stop vibration and stuff. And behind this, there's a plastic, um, a square plastic plate, which is the face plate that is made to go over these and then obviously fastened to this box. What I was thinking is cutting out a square here and having this, take this off, this rubber piece, because I won't, don't think I'll need it, and have this plastic piece just sticking out it almost look like um i don't know the way a regulator or something sits on a firewall by doing that that will actually give me another 20 millimeters um it's an option but well, this is i've got a welder piece in here anyway so before i start welding maybe i can just like square this out here bring that plastic Take this off, bring that plastic piece through so it sits on the outside of the firewall. It's not electrical, it's just basically a bulkhead for, for holding these in place. So it can be exposed um, in the engine bay, it's not going to um, hurt anything. 
and I'll gain another 20 mil. I can get my finger up there. There's heaps of room. And that, oh, excuse me, that might help push that control back a little bit. That'll give me a little bit more, um, see if I can ro roll this so we don't get glare. Or even stand it up if I can. Okay, here we go. So, as you can see, I've got this loaded in from the front. So there's, there's quite a bit of room for that, you know, where that would have to go back. It would have to go back quite a long way to be loaded in from the back. And as you can see, that's hitting that box there. If I gain 20 mil, I still don't think I can load it in from the back, but I can definitely load it in from the front, taking these tabs off, and just re I can recess it more, so it looks as if it's meant to be like that. And all I'll do is I'll use some, some epoxy, and I'll epoxy this into the console. Um, if I ever need to take the console out, the only thing I have to do is disconnect the radio. Uh, that's it. And um, where all these cables go on, this is all accessible from, from here anyway. So I just pop the cables off and then the whole console comes out. So that might be the go. I did try putting it in here, but the problem is my cables are going to be too short. Which means I'll have to either go and buy new cables or build new cables. Probably build them and buy them. They're not that hard. To, um, to make um, but yeah it's it's a shame I, I can't alter the body on this because it's got all the um, it's got all these uh, clips here which hold the outer sleeve of the cable in place so that the inner sleeve can slide freely um, and there's, there's just no room to shorten it up I just can't shorten it up you know, you've got these arms here which come right down to the back. Um, but, you know, I'm 100% sure I'm going to be able to mount this. I don't think there's going to be a major issue. Um, that, so that cable, that cable actually goes in there. And that's supposed to go around the corner here. Like that. And it gets, it gets clipped onto this here. But at the moment, there we go. And it's only, it's only just making it at the moment. It's under, it's under a lot of pressure. But see, as you can see, when I, when I go to uh, change it, it, it pops off, and that's because that's hard up against that box. So if I can get 20 mil, an extra 20 mil there, um, it's going to help out a lot. It's going to help out a lot, and obviously, because I haven't even attempted to mount this properly this is sitting in on an angle so yeah i reckon i just want to get this cable out there we go and it frees up the face again so i i, I reckon that that is my best option at this point in time the thing i'm really happy about is that all these components have gone in um, and I, and I think I think actually cutting that square out in the firewall is is definitely going to help. I I think that's going to help a lot. So um, I don't know if you can see through that hole there. If the camera will pick it up, but you can see where the original mounting plate was. You might be able to see my hand through that hole there. That's the original mounting mounting plate. So that. At one time, uh, s sat flat on the Festiva firewall, but God knows how the Festiva firewall was built. It probably had humps and bumps and all sorts of stuff. So, um, you know, the closer that I can bring that to the firewall, the better, because it means I have to put less spacing in there. The, the little tube that I put in there to, to space it out, I can make that shorter. So, or 20 mil shorter. So, um, 
I'm gonna have a go at this tomorrow. I don't think I've got anything to lose because I've already cut this out and you know we're on the flat surface now so if, if I do stuff it up um, you know I'll just I'll just bring it up I'll just bring it up to here <laughs> up to this hole bring it straight up to this hole across and back down or just just make it a short one across here and just down to here and I'll just I'll just graft that back in that way I get rid of that hole as well um, yeah so it's all good as you can see heater pipes aircon pipes and everything's sitting under there so it's all good the only thing I might have to do here is I might just have to grind this out a little bit on the corner but I didn't want to do anything yet until all of the unit was bolted together and I'm gonna put some self tappers in because I don't I don't want to rely on these things uh, to hold it together so once the, once these bands go on what I will do is I will put self tappers into there and they'll go into the plastic body of the unit now I've had a look inside each of the units and there's nothing there's nothing that it's going to hit it's not going to hit the heater core it's not going to hit any air conditioning pipes there's actually quite a lot of space in there um, so I'll be able to get away with that it's been a um, it's been a very exciting day for me um, very nervous day because any time you start hacking into uh, the, you know the body of a really rare car or vehicle it's um yeah it's a, it's a little bit scary because you just you can't it's not like I'm going to find another donor vehicle somewhere um you know so <clears throat> you know I had my doubts about this aircon unit but you know it's worked out all right um as you can see there that's the steering column mount so we have enough we have enough clearance there between the edge of the box heater, bo uh, heater box and the um, steering column so I don't ha I'm not struggling for room there there's that little bit of a cutout on the uh, console there I have to clean that up obviously I'm going to put a nice little chamfered edge on it like the rest of the console just to, to make it look nice um, yeah so all good all good there's that there's that little tab I was pointing to from through that hole uh, so yeah I can move that'll move 20 millimeters forward and the um, the little mounting uh, spacer for that will be reduced in size so that'll be good uh, it shouldn't be shouldn't be a major drama these cables even though it, it's struggling here at the front with the fascia panel these cables are pretty much on the mark they just need a little bit of slack um, to just assist them and by being able to push that control unit back into that console 20 mil I think that's going to give me what I need um, so yeah that's a job for tomorrow I've had enough for tonight <laughs> um, lay this lamp down yeah so I've had enough for tonight I think I've done good um, first ever aircon unit I've fitted so I'm pretty pretty happy about that okay everyone um, I'll see you in the morning cheers